Hello, hello, welcome to today's colloquium, which is just a different name for this week, Max <laughs> Our speaker today is uh, Zdeněk Dvořák from Charles University in Prague. And he will be speaking about three flow critical graphs. Okay, thank you. So, okay, yeah, so Bernard promised I will say something about flow critical graphs and uh, I don't expect anyone know, to know what they are because we kind of, well, they were kind of defined like two years ago. So let me start with some general motivation and uh, basically all of my research goes to things like for the theorem. So the claim that every planar graph is for color level. And as you definitely know, this was an open question for a very long time and uh, people had many interesting ideas about uh, how, to, how to approach it. And the one uh, relevant for me was actually like an amazing idea of, uh, of that, which should have worked by, but didn't, but uh, anyway, uh, led to uh, interesting, uh, interesting uh, new mathematics and uh, uh, the idea basically is well okay so you can you can uh, if you have a graph drawn in the plane it has a, this natural dual graph so we can have a look what the coloring corresponds in the in the dual of the graph so okay, let me draw an example here so let's take some planar graph For coloring, let's say, oh, it's very hard to screw up the coloring of this graph, so I hope I can manage. Uh, and then you can consider the dual of this graph. So uh, the graph where you put uh, a vertex into each face. And join well, any two of them that uh, that uh, share an edge. And. Uh, now you would uh, you would like to assign this four coloring in the in the original graph something in the, in the in the dual graph, and uh, what that observed is that uh, the right or the interesting thing to consider is if from this uh, from this from this coloring you create some assignment of values uh, to the edges of uh, uh, of, of this dual graph uh, in some in some directed way. So if I imagine that I let's say I direct this edge in in this way, I will assign to it uh, the difference of the color of the vertex on the right of this edge and uh, the one on the left. So to it to this, I will assign let's say this flow value three. Uh, let's say to this uh, to this edge again. I go from uh, right to left, so I should put there 0, minus 3, but let's do things modulo 4, so let me put here plus 1, uh, here I should be putting 3 by the same rule, and oh, this is kind of boring, here I should be one and so on. So this, uh, in this way, I can take a four coloring of the original graph and 
get an assignment of, uh, of uh, values to the edges of the of the new graph, of the dual graph. And now, if you uh, if you have a look what uh, what happens at the vertices of uh, of the dual, so what happens if I if I try to sum up this this these flow values on uh, uh, on the on the edges uh, on well, on the on the edges incident with with this uh, with this vertex. Well, this uh, this value is that I have here is the this color minus this color. Then here I am subtracting this and adding this. Then here I am subtracting well, subtracting this part, so it cancels and adding this, and so on. And so eventually everything cancels out, and the sum of the values around each vertex will be zero modulo four when I count it in uh, in Z form. So well, if uh, if I have uh, if I have uh, four coloring in a planar graph, uh, graph G, this process uh, gives me a uh, flow in the in the dual of the graph with values from uh, from Z K. And by flow, I mean this uh, this property that if you sum up the amount of flow leaving any vertex, it will be zero in Z four. I mean uh, there is there is a little bit of a uh, little bit of a technicality. Well, I mean uh, kind of obvious one. So if I if I'm sending one unit of flow in in this direction, this behaves exactly the same as if I instead send three units of flow in the opposite direction. So other than obvious things like this, this is the definition. And uh, moreover, uh, the values on every edge will be non-zero because this is a proper coloring. Every two adjacent vertices get different colors, so their difference will be non-zero. So this so I'm getting the values, uh, values here. Or I can I can say that this is a nowhere zero flow. So from every four coloring of, of a planar graph, I can get a nowhere zero uh, Z4 flow in the, in the dual. And uh, the interesting or important part is actually that the arrow that I deleted actually should be there. If you give me a nowhere zero flow in the dual graph with values in Z4, I can perform the reverse process and get a proper for coloring of the uh, of the original graph. Uh, this requires a little bit of a thought that it actually works. So I mean, you can just try to uh, try to uh, completely mechanically reverse this process. So if I if I have here whatever I, I decide that this will be called zero without loss of generality, and then because uh, I have here this flow value of three, this tells me that the color here must be three, and so on. So I can uh, from this flow get a color, get some assignment of uh, values. Uh, but the issue that you need to worry about is whether actually you will get it consistently. Like if you if you start from this vertex and like extend the the colors along this path, will I actually get the same color if I try to extend it along uh, along, uh, along this path? But uh, it's uh, fairly easy to argue that uh, that you actually will. So. Uh, this works out fine, and of course the fact that I'm doing this for four coloring doesn't matter if I do it for k coloring. Exactly the same process. I will get uh, no var zero flow with values in Z K. So uh, instead of uh, trying to to prove uh, whatever 
four color theorem that every planar graph is four colorable. You can try to prove a nowhere zero Z four flow theorem. Try to prove that every planar bridgeless graph uh, has a nowhere zero Z four flow, which actually doesn't uh, gain you much uh, because we know that they are completely equivalent. Uh, but uh, what uh, what was the like the genius idea of, of that was to was to propose that you can at this point actually forget about this uh, this graph being uh, this graph being planar. So what that was uh, was proposing well we are trying to prove four color theorem which is restricted to planar graphs and working with planar graphs is kind of difficult like you try to do something natural like identify two vertices and your graph suddenly is not planar. So that doesn't that makes things uh, li your life complicated. So maybe instead uh, you would like to pro prove something general that holds for, for all graphs and just implies the four color theorem as a special case when you restrict it to the planar graph, which is kind of hopeless if you work in the coloring setting, because I mean there is no good reason why an arbitrary graph should be four colorable. Uh, but it actually has a good chance to work in uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the flow setting because uh, it turns out that kind of the more edges you have in your graph, the better it is for you because the more freedom you have uh, you have uh, uh, to uh, to set up your flow the way you like. So uh, it makes sense to hope that uh, that. Uh, you may actually prove existence of nowhere zero ZK flows in arbitrary graphs, not just in planar graphs. And very adventurously, that made several conjectures. Uh, so, he conjectures well, five flow conjecture, which says that every to edge connected graph as nowhere zero five flow is it five flow and uh, yeah, if this uh, if this is if, if this is true then by this dualizing process this implies that every planar graph is five colorable, which you all know that is true from some basic graph theory class, and that's not like hugely difficult to uh, difficult to prove. So you might hope that this will be kind of doable. Uh, I mean, obviously, when you are trying to prove the four color theorem, you would like to have here a, a nowhere zero four flow. But uh, that unfortunately doesn't work without additional uh, without additional uh, assumptions because uh, the Peterson graph uh, doesn't have a nowhere zero four flow. It's easy to see that on three regular graphs, the existence of nowhere zero four flow is equivalent to the graph being three edge colorable, and uh, Peterson graph is not three edge colorable. Uh, so that also proposed a way around this, which starts the same, but also here forbids the Peterson graph as a minor. So do you need to have some, uh, some uh, proposition telling you that the dual of a planar graph is always two edge connected? If I mean, uh, if you if you if you had a, if you had a bridge uh, in in your dual, then the original graph contains a loop. So uh, bridges are dual to loops. Okay. And kind of uh, yeah, if, uh, if 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 you have a graph with, with a loop, then it's not colorable. So I mean, I mean, the four color theorem kind of implicitly assumes that the graph doesn't have loops. Uh, it, it's not stated there, but uh, but uh, but yeah. So if you if you take here a planar graph which is connected and doesn't have loops, its dual will be two edge connected. Yeah. 
if I forbid here uh, Peterson minor, then should have over zero that four flow. So this uh, this conjecture actually implies four color theorem because Peterson graph is non-planar. So if you have if you take a planar graph, it definitely doesn't contain Peterson graph as a minor. And therefore, by this conjecture, it would have no bar zero Z4 flow, and therefore its dual would have a coloring, poor coloring. And then he had also three flow conjecture uh, that tells you that every four edge connected graph. As a uh, nowhere zero Z3 flow. And uh, this one, if you consider what it says in the, in the dual, well, uh, a cut, an edge cut of size 3 corresponds in, uh, in, the, in the dual to a triangle. So uh, if uh, uh, requiring here four edge connectivity is basically the same as in the original graph forbidding triangles. So this implies that every triangle free planar graph is three colorable, which is the well known theorem of Gretsch. <coughs> So, uh, okay. So this uh, this gives you some uh, some framework in which you can consider like a generalization of a lot of coloring problems from planar graphs, and uh, in uh, you, you do this generalization into into unrestricted graphs, and you might hope that this will give you some new tools how to attack these problems and possibly make your life uh, easier. But unfortunately, it doesn't quite seem to seem to work that way. All of these conjectures are very difficult. All of them are still open now after sixty-ish uh, years after they they were stated. So they are they are. Uh, they Isn't the third one um, woven by this theorem? Only for planar graphs. For, for all, all of all of them all of them hold for planar graphs. But the, 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 the question oh, is whether they hold for uh, in, 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 in general. Uh, and by the way, by the way uh, I mean, that was uh, like extremely adventurous in stating these conjectures. Like, uh, uh, he didn't even know that there is any like finite bound K such that every, uh, every uh, whatever 2 edge connected graph would actually have an over zero ZK flow. But, uh, that was uh, that was fixed relatively relatively fast afterwards. Um, there was there has been like a lot of progress on uh, on these, but uh, still they are not not resolved. <coughs> what is uh, what is known is uh, that uh, I mean two edge connected graphs all uh, have uh, have no where zero Z six flows. By Seymour, but there are now a couple of different proofs of this uh, this fact. Uh, for uh, for the for, uh, for flow conjecture, uh, the best result is probably that it's true for uh, graphs of uh, for graphs of maximum degree at most three. Uh, which is uh, actually quite a difficult result. So it was started in the uh, well, 1990s by uh, Robertson, Seymour, Sanders, and Thomas, the, the guys who 
made the, the nicer proof of the four color theorem. Uh, in, so they had a very long paper where they shown that it's sufficient to prove this in, in two special classes of cubic graphs and then a paper showing that for one of the, cl the classes of the uh, the, all these special graphs uh, was uh, joint work with uh, Catherine Edwards and appeared uh, like five years ago and for the other special class uh, it's still somewhere floating around. I mean they, 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 uh, they claim to have, uh, have, have the proof that they are just writing it down but uh, I still don't think that the paper is published. So it is somewhere, somewhere in, in a limbo and it's, 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 it's a very complicated project. But, uh, and for the uh, well, three flow conjecture uh, I mean, so what is uh, what is uh, known is uh, well, actually Kochol proved that uh, that in order to prove this this conjecture, it, it is sufficient to prove prove it for five edge connected graphs. So uh, Kochol proved that if if uh, every every five edge connected graph has uh, nowhere zero z3 flow this implies actually this three flow conjecture that actually every four edge connected uh, so in order to prove this conjecture it you can just prove it assuming that your graph is five edge connected but uh, the best result uh, towards uh, this was say uh, by recent result by uh, Lovas, uh, Thomasen, uh, Wu and Jean, who proved it for six edge connected graphs. I mean, this, this, uh, the, the, the proof is actually very tricky. And, uh, it's it's quite, uh, quite nice when you dig, uh, dig, dig out all the technical details and actually try to ignore them. Okay, question. So, for the Greenwich theorem, you try to start with four faces and identify the opposite vertices in the four faces, and they, that's how you get rid of the uh, four faces, and have only five faces or bigger. So, is that the Kochol kind of analog that you have? Uh, to an extent, yeah, yeah, yeah. To an extent, yeah. To an extent, yeah. To an extent, so by, by exactly the same idea, you can get rid of vertices of degree 4. So if you have a vertex of degree 4, you can split it off into a pair of edges. So this is uh, this corresponds to this to this to this folding. So it is uh, it is uh, basically trivial following from standard splitter theorems uh, that a minimal counterexample to three flow to the three flow conjecture is uh, is five regular. But uh, it's not it's not completely clear that it's five edge connected. It might have uh, it might have uh, uh, non-trivial uh, for uh, for edge cards. And if I if uh, if I uh, now I may be lying to I, I actually have, haven't looked at Kochol's argument for some time, so I actually don't think he proved that the minimal counterexample is uh, five edge connected. He just proved that if you have a uh, counterexample, you have a five edge connected one. Um, but uh, but yeah, the, the starting point is getting rid of vertices of other degree than uh, than five, and then somehow dealing with uh, with non-trivial four edge cards. Okay, so. Uh, so this is kind of where we are stuck uh, at this uh, at this point, and so what can what what can we do? Well, we can try to have a look some ideas uh, that were developed for uh, coloring and see whether they tell us uh, anything uh, in the in the flow setting, and uh, in the uh, in the setting of uh, coloring. Uh, it turns out to be very useful to study uh, so-called critical graphs, which are basically minimal obstructions for your graph to have a certain chromatic number. So we will say that a graph G is 
at least I'd say light is critical for a coloring. If uh, G itself is not k colorable, but all proper subgraphs of G are k colorable. So uh, as, an, as an example, uh, let's, let's consider any odd cycle. So let's take any odd length cycle. Yeah. So uh, it has chromatic uh, number three, so it's not too colorable. But if you delete any edge, if you take any proper subgraph, you get a two-colorable two subgraph. So this means that this is an example of a graph which is critical for two-coloring. And uh, well, you know the, all know the, this, this result that a graph is two-colorable if and only if it doesn't contain an odd cycle. Uh, so this, uh, yeah. So this, 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 this is kind of the meaning of these critical graphs being obstructions for uh, for uh, for two colorability or k colorability. So if you start with a graph which is not k colorable and throw away its vertices and edges as long as it stays not k colorable, you will end up with something which is not k colorable but making it smaller in any way will make it k-colorable, so with a critical subgraph. So a graph is k-colorable if and only if it doesn't contain any k-critical subgraph. So k these critical subgraphs are exactly the obstructions for the graph being, uh, being k-colorable. And so if you could say something nice about them, if you could somehow describe how they look like or something, it would tell you a lot about, uh, about k-colorability. Which, I mean, in a, in a sense, tells you that you actually cannot say anything nice about them for k at least 3, because deciding whatever 3 colorability is uh, NP hard, and so the obstructions are well, unlikely to have any kind of nice structure, because if they had nice structure, you would probably be able to use them to, to get an algorithm for polynomial time algorithm for three colorability. Uh, but you can you can still play with them and uh, you, get, you can get like very interesting results. So uh, for instance uh, uh, Kostočka and Jansi. Ten years ago or something like that. Uh, got uh, a result, I mean, about the density of, uh, of these uh, critical graphs in general for general <coughs> type, which I will not tell you because I would mess up the mess up the expression. But let me say the, how it works for three coloring. So what they say is that if G is critical for three coloring. Then the number of edges of G is at least five times the number of vertices of G minus two divided by, by three. So that uh, that. Uh, Critical graphs must be relatively relatively dense. They must have average. If, if if they have a lot of vertices, their average degree must be close to like uh, ten over three, three point something. 
and uh, I mean this is, this is actually a culmination of long line of research on, uh, on, the, on the density of the critical graph which, which started also sometimes in whatever 80s, 70s where people were trying to get better and better bounds and this one is very nice because it's tight, there are like in, infinite family of graphs for which it uh, turns out to be fine. Is, is this true for triangles? Uh, triangles are not critical force recalling because they are three oh, for three, not for two. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah. So, for for example, uh, how how is this how is this useful? It implies implies uh, Grachy's uh, Grachy's theorem. I mean, it's easy to see that it's sufficient to prove Grachy's theorem for uh, graphs of girls at least five, and planar graphs of girls at least five have necessarily fewer edges than this by by Euler's formula and therefore they cannot be uh, critical for three coloring and therefore they must be all three colorable and uh, i mean there is uh, there is uh, there, there is i mean uh, a now huge machinery about things that hold for uh, critical uh, critical graphs we know things like that for any surface there are only finitely many graphs which are critical for five coloring and can be drawn on this surface so, for example, if you want to test test whether a graph drawn on whatever torus is five colorable, there is a finite list of graphs that you need to check whether they appear in your in your graph or not, and tell you if if they are not there, then your graph is necessarily five colorable, making it like extremely easy to uh, to to test for this property. Uh, so the question is, can we somehow um, get something uh, about interesting about these conjectures or other problems about uh, uh, about nowhere zero flows by considering these uh, kind of critical graphs? So we have we know what the critical graphs for coloring are, and if we do this dualizing process, it will give us some definition of critical graphs for existence of flows and uh, then we can study these, uh, these graphs and if we say some, manage to say something about them then yeah, it could, uh, could give us something interesting. So uh, how, how does this actually dualize? So we want say, a definition of a graph G being uh, ZK flow critical To mean basically something something like this: the graph doesn't contain ZK flow, but any anything which is properly contained in it uh, does. And what uh, what containment do you do we want to have here? Well, here this is basically a, in, uh, for for coloring. This is basically about deletion of edges. So when you delete an edge, your graph suddenly becomes uh, becomes colorable. If you delete an edge in planar graphs, what happens in, in the dual? You contract the corresponding edge of the dual. So basically we want to replace here the subgraphs or the deletion of edges by contraction of edges. So G is ZK flow critical. If G does not have Over zero ZK flow, but every proper contraction of G does. Okay, so now we can play with this uh, with this definition. And kind of the, the first natural problem that comes up is what can we actually say about the, the density of these ZK flow critical graphs? And so, for example, we can uh, dualize this uh, dualize this uh, uh, this result. But to dualize it, we can we, we have to restrict ourselves to plane the graph. Otherwise, the dual doesn't make make sense. So. If uh, if uh, if G is planar 
and uh, Z3 flow critical. And uh, let's say twitch connected to get, so I mean, again, here we are ignoring loops, so here we have four, four bit, uh, four bit uh, bridges. Uh, then, I mean, if you, if you play with Euler's formula and, uh, and this, uh, this bound, it will tell you that the number of edges of G is at most five times number of vertices of G minus eight divided by, divided by, by two. I mean, the, the constants actually don't, uh, don't matter that much. It tells you that every planar Z3 flow critical graphs has to be relatively sparse. And, uh, just a few edges. Which is, uh, is kind of natural in the, in the, in the, for, the, for the coloring. Having more edges is bad for you because it makes things difficult to, uh, to color. But for flows, it's actually good for you. If you have more edges, you have more freedom how to send the flow, flow around. So it makes sense that the graphs that are difficult to, uh, to have uh, find an over zero Z3 flow are relatively sparse. And so, uh, like continuing in, uh, in the spirit of, of Tat's conjectures, you might hope that here you can, can maybe delete this, uh, this word planar and prove this for all graphs. But you cannot. <laughs> uh, there is actually a for example, uh, which was found by that uh, the following graph, if you take uh, the complete graph k3 and minus 3 and add one edge here between, uh, between the vertices of degree 3 with degree uh, and, minus, uh, and minus 3, this one is critical for the 3 coloring. And uh, the number of edges is uh, three times the number of vertices minus something minus seven. So uh, the the right constant here cannot be five over two because I have here an example for which it is three. And they they conjectured that this is uh, this is the best possible. So this is uh, a conjecture that is, is, is that the number of edges is always at most this. What they can prove is uh, that for n minus something, I. I mean, for, to get here minus 10, we have to exclude some exceptional graphs, which I forgot what they are. So this holds for large critical graphs. Um, so I mean, if you could uh, if you could prove uh, prove this, uh, this would be actually like quite quite. I mean, if you could prove this, and if this wasn't false, that would be amazing because that would uh, that would imply. Uh, the, uh, uh, if this would imply the, the, the three flow conjecture because if you have, uh, if you, we know that we can uh, restrict our, uh, to ourselves to look, look at five edge connected graphs. Five edge connected graphs have well, average degree at least five, whereas this says that critical graphs should have average degree less than five. So if this false conjecture were true, it would imply 
the five flow conjecture, uh, sorry, the three flow conjecture, but uh, it doesn't. But uh, anyway, still, still, this would at least tell you something relatively interesting about uh, about things which are close to to the to the uh, three flow conjecture. Um, yeah, but uh, but unfortunately, we don't really know how to how to get beyond this fairly fairly weak part. One, one thing that uh, that we kind of observed or proved. So if you have a look at these uh, at these uh, examples, they are very far from being planar. So this is case three, uh, and so this this is a graph which has huge genus. You cannot embed it on any surface of of, of, of small of small genus. And uh, with uh, With Boyan Mohar, uh, we proved that this actually kind of uh, has to be that way. We proved that the number of edges is almost five times the number of vertices plus five times the Euler genus of your graph minus a divided by by two. So. This bound, except that we have to put here this uh, this correction term for for genus. So if there actually if there is any contraexample to this uh, to this conjecture, it must have large genus. It uh, it, it, uh, it cannot be close to being planar or close to being embeddable on a on a surface. So that's one result that I wanted uh, to uh, report. Uh, another uh, another result uh, towards a kind of uh, uh, that goes into into this direction is uh, we got recently with uh, Sofia Arnadotte, uh, Evelyn Perch Smith, Ben Moore, and Robert Chamal, uh, where we considered. I mean, there there is uh, there is this. Uh, Kind of the best uh, result towards the three flow conjecture by uh, Lovas, Thomas, and uh, Wu and Zhang, for which gives the proof of existence of number zero, four, number zero three flow for six edge connected graphs. It actually um, doesn't quite assume six edge connectivity, it's much more technical result, which it with somewhat uh, weaker uh, assumptions, and uh, you can uh, you can fight with it, and uh, you can get some results on uh, uh, so, say flow critical uh, graphs from it. I will not actually tell you what is the result that we got because that would require like 30 minutes of further definitions and. In the end, it would be something incredibly technical, which uh, probably is not all that uh, all that interesting. But just uh, what what does it tell you? Tell us tell us uh, in relation to this uh, to this conjecture. Well, it uh, for example tells us that if you have a uh, graph which has only vertices of degree, well, it can have a lot of vertices of degree five. It can have Lot of vertices of degree six, and it can have one more vertex of, uh, of large degree. So in this uh, in this setting, the result tells us that if this graph is uh, that three flow critical, then uh, this delta is uh, at the most. Uh, if I have k vertices of, of degree five, it's at most k minus. Uh, k minus two. So if I only have vertices of degree five and six, and one more vertex, it cannot have absurdly huge degree. And I mean this is uh, this is on one hand kind of nice because it uh, it actually tells you about the the number of edges here if you if you count it is what, uh, uh, five times the, the number of vertices of degree five plus six times the number of vertices of degree six plus uh, well, this, uh, this degree delta which is at most k minus two so this works out I mean this 
uh, this uh, kills this, so this works out to something like 3n minus level 4. So this uh, this uh, this uh, this supports uh, supports this, uh, this this conjecture that this this bound is uh, kind of the best possible. I mean, we are, we are not getting all the way to minus seven. We are getting to just to minus four, but at least we are right on this uh, this this high roll. Yeah. On the negative side, I mean, this is uh, this is. Uh, if you if you believe in uh, in uh, three, flow, uh, three flow conjecture, this is a, a result about uh, empty set of graphs. I mean, these uh, these graphs are. Well, I mean, uh, if then there might have maybe some some trivial non trivial cards, but I mean, uh, they are, they are probably uh, uh, four edge connected or even five edge connected, and so by this conjecture, they actually cannot cannot be <laughs> critical, and uh, so uh, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, so. Thank you for your attention. Questions here? Yes, no. So what kind of tools do you usually use for this line of work? Um, I mean, so this, uh, um, there are kind of, kind of uh, two, uh, two approaches. Uh, the approach that is used to, let, let's say, prove, uh, prove this result or this result uh, is kind of inspired uh, by, this, uh, by this proof of Kostočka and Jansi about uh, uh, critical uh, graphs for, uh, for coloring, which uses kind of what's called a potential method, which kind of enables you to set up some, some kind of uh, Discharging argument on an induction on 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 your uh, on your uh, on your graphs, and uh, if you basically follow this, the, the proof of Kostočka and Jansi with some uh, unmodified ideas to the to the flow setting, you will get uh, get these results. And then uh, uh, the other approach that we are using is uh, taken from this proof of uh, of uh, Lovas and uh, uh, Thomas and uh, Wu and Zhang. Uh, which is, uh, I mean, it uses a lot of a lot of ideas from uh, from the uh, from the flow theory, so like a splitting of edges. Like if you have a if you have a vertex, and you can you can split off, split off two edges and it form a single edge from them. If you get a flow in the in the modified graph, you also have a flow in the in the in the original graph. They. Uh, you need to, the the other thing that that they play with is introducing a boundary. So, uh, in the, in the definition that I gave uh, of the flows, uh, the amount of flow created or lost in every vertex is zero. But you can ask it to be some prescribed value in in uh, in, in that k, which then gives you some additional freedom to do things like you decide what the flow on an edge will be delete this edge and adjust the boundary of the two vertices. And like a combination of, of, of these ideas. Yeah. You will have to pay for, for the ticket yeah, yeah, if you ask for, for the now. question. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say it's